Which way of eating actually makes your bones stronger? Uh, good question, I'm glad you asked. Which way of eating makes your bones weaker and more likely to break if you fall or you're in some kind of trauma? This is important information. You need to know this, and I'm gonna tell you about a study in this video that makes it very clear which kind of diet gives you the strongest bones. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical practice. And my job as a doctor is to help you achieve your very best health as easily and as naturally and as cheaply as possible. And this video is gonna help you do that. This very important article was recently published in BMC Medicine. It's, uh, there's an online full text version. I'm gonna put a link in the show notes so that you can actually read the study for yourself. I never want you to blindly believe me or anyone else. I want you to always trust, but verify. This study included more than 54,000 participants and went on for longer than a decade. Those are both very good indicators that this is a meaningful study that we should look into. Uh, this study was, uh, they took the participants from the Epic Oxford study that uh, signed up participants between 1993 and 2001. Now this was an observational uh, cohort study. So this is epidemiology. There, there was no control, there was no blinding. But I think in this case, it, it doesn't matter as much and I'm gonna explain to you why. Uh, an observational study uses food frequency questionnaire. So they basically give the participants a multiple choice guess test and they ask questions like, how many cups of grapes have you eaten in the last month? Or how many cups of ribs have you eaten in the last six months? Who knows, right? I don't know the answer to that question. So all I can do is guess. But they actually broke the participants up into four groups. Uh, meat eaters was the first group. And so if you eat red meat of any kind, then you were put into the meat eater group. The second group was pescatarians who are basically vegetarians that also eat fish. And so you would eat fish, some dairy and some eggs, that may, that puts you into the fish eater group. Then the third group were, were vegetarians who would only occasionally eat eggs or dairy. And then the fourth group was vegans. And so you can tell these, these four people, they pretty much know who they are. If you ask me, do you eat red meat often? I would say, yeah. If uh, you ask a pescatarian, do you avoid all red meat but eat fish? They would say, well, yeah. If you ask a, a vegetarian, do you avoid all fish and red meat, but you occasionally eat eggs and dairy? You would say, yeah. And then the vegans would have said, well, obviously I don't eat any animal products whatsoever, therefore I'm a vegan. So you can see in this case, even though this is observational research, I think that we can draw some meaningful conclusions from this. It obviously still doesn't prove causation, but I think the findings are very telling and I think you're gonna to wanna to know what they were. I'm gonna show the results of this study on the screen in just a minute in, in a plot type layout, but I want you to understand two things. First of all, in the meat eater group, there was a significantly higher percentage of smokers than in the other groups, okay? And in the vegan group, there was a substantially larger portion of people who said that they engage in routine, moderate, or high-level activity. So they work out, they, they run, they jog, they, they row, whatever. And so this is something called healthy user bias. Back in from 1993 to 2001, the carnivore diet, the ketovore diet, the keto diet, those weren't really movements back then. People didn't know about that. Back then, if you ate red meat, then you obviously ignored all of the health authorities on television and magazines on the internet. You just ate whatever the hell you wanted to eat. And that included red meat. You were more likely to be a smoker. You're more likely to drink. But the people who were actually trying to be healthy back then, the majority of them were trying to eat a plant-based diet, either vegetarian or vegan. And you can see that in, in when they broke out by socioeconomic status and when they broke out by social habits like smoking and exercise, the people who were trying to be healthier, the healthy user uh, people in the study were less likely to smoke and also much more likely to exercise. And indeed that shows in the data. Now this study tried to correct 
for the increased level of smoking in meat eaters, and they tried to correct for the in increased exercise activity of the vegans. Who knows how well they corrected for that, but despite living an unhealthy lifestyle, if you were a meat eater back around the year 2000, or you were a vegan back then, and you tried to never smoke and tried to do everything healthy, the results of this study are so telling when it, com when it comes to letting you know which diet gives you the strongest bones. So here are the results of this study. So you can see in this plot beside me that for total fracture, so if you broke any bone anywhere in your body that was recorded, the meat eaters and the fish eaters won this, okay? They had far fewer fractures than the vegetarians and the vegans. The, the vegetarians were still getting some usable protein and other things from the eggs and dairy. And so they still did much better than the vegans who did terribly for total fractures. Uh, in this plot, the further to the right the dot is, the more fractures they had. Uh, the big line right down the middle is baseline, and you can see that the meat eaters uh, were right on baseline and the fish eaters actually did a little better. Uh, now for arm fractures, the meat eaters again were right on baseline, the fish eaters again did a little bit better, and then the vegetarians did worse and the vegans did worst of all. Uh, for wrist fractures, right again, the meat eaters right in the middle, the fish eaters a little better than the meat eaters. Uh, the vegetarians were uh, right on baseline with the meat eaters, and again, the vegans did the worst of all. Hip fractures, now this is a very important subcategory of fractures. A hip fracture is, a, is an excellent overall indicator of your overall health, your overall diet, how strong your body is, your bones, your muscles. And also when you have a hip fracture, that is a red flag event. All doctors and especially orthopedic surgeons know this. When someone has a hip fracture from trauma, they are much more likely to die in the next year or two after that hip fracture. It's kind of, uh, you, you go downhill from there. So hip fractures are huge. You do not want to have a hip fracture. Uh, it, it, it's a, it portends very bad things for your immediate future. So let's look at the hip fractures. The meat eaters right on baseline. Fish eaters, not quite as good. They tie with the vegetarians who occasionally eat dairy and eggs. And then the vegans, look how far to the right they are. This is very, very worrisome for hip fracture. Uh, leg fractures, uh, again, the meat eaters, the fish eaters, and the egg and dairy eaters kind of line up right on the baseline. Look how far to the right the vegans are. Not good at all. Uh, ankle fractures, everybody pretty much lines up on baseline here. The fish eaters tend to do a little better. Now, ankle fractures are unique among fractures because they are closely related to a person's BMI. So basically how overweight you are. If you step off a curb or, or turn your ankle, if you're heavier, you're more likely to break an ankle. And that's why the fish eaters do substantially better because they have a lower BMI. As you can see, if you look into the study, the meat eaters are also the people who drink a lot and smoke and everything else. And they're going to be, they're going to be heavier people. So they're more likely to break that ankle. Then finally, other fracture sites. So this is a fracture anywhere else. The meat eaters, fish eaters, and vegans line up right on the baseline and uh, are the vegetarians. And then again, the vegans do substantially worse than everyone. Now, it's fair to say that the vegans in this study were not taking all of the supplements that a vegan should take in order to even come close to achieving uh, ideal bone strength and muscle strength. Eating a vegan diet properly and getting all the vitamins and minerals that you need and all of the actual usable protein that you need is very hard. And these people were probably, they probably were under the false assumption that if you just eat lots of vegetables, eat the rainbow of colors, then you're going to get all the vitamins and minerals you need and protein and other things. Obviously from this study, we can see that is not the case. There's a long list of supplements that vegans must eat in order to have bone density as strong as a meat eater or a fish eater. I think this study bears that out. Now, when you think about bone strength, the, probably the first thing that comes to mind is calcium intake. And that's thanks to all the commercials paid for by Citrical, Caltrate, and Oscal for all those years that they were advertising that you needed to take a calcium supplement. What most people don't realize is that your bones are a protein matrix. Your bone is mostly protein. And then you put calcium and other minerals within that matrix to make the bones stronger. 
but without the underlying protein, your bone is inherently going to be weaker and more susceptible to a break if you fall. So with that, when we look back at this diet, the meat eaters were obviously eating lots of meat. Meat is the best source of protein on the planet. There is no combination of vegetables or plants that will give you the quality of protein that you can get from meat. And I think the same goes for fish as well. And that's why the fish group, the fish eaters did so well in this study as well. If you're a pescatarian, then you don't try to limit the fish, right? You just eat, you can eat fish every day, every meal, it's fine, but you don't eat red meat. I think fish are an excellent source of, of a complete amino acid uh, bed, bedrock of nutrition that also is a protein source that is very high quality protein that's easily bioabsorbable and bioavailable. Now, when it comes to the vegetarian group, they were eating a, a largely a plant-based diet and then when they did eat cheese and eggs, you can imagine as a vegetarian, they tried to minimize that, maybe only one or two days a week. So they were depending in, in the majority of their days on this planet to get protein from plants. And you can see in the results that their bone strength is just not as good. And then the last group, the poor vegans, their bone strength was abysmal in this study, as it is in real life, unless you're committed to taking 10 or 12 different supplements and basically eating for 14 hours a day to get enough plant protein that you can actually use some of it for as meaningful, high quality protein that's bioabsorbable, then that's the life you've got to live, eating 14 hours a day and taking 12 supplements a day. Most people would just rather eat a proper human diet, a species specific diet, an ancestrally appropriate diet, which includes meat and fish. That's how you have the strongest bones. And I think this, this study makes it quite clear. And this study was probably performed by people who believe in a plant-based diet. They were probably a little shocked at their results, but they had them printed and published nonetheless, and I applaud them for that. Now, if you're interested in having really, really stronger bones, I've got a video on this channel about all the tips and tricks that you can use to strengthen your bones, even if you currently suffer from osteopenia or osteoporosis, and it'll pop up right here at the end of this video. I hope this video helped. If you enjoyed this, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that you can enjoy the two to three new videos I post on this channel each and every week. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.